Today, we're going to make a Wisconsin maple glazed pork loin. And one of the reasons that I chose this technique is because I wanted to be more focused on the techniques of food and cooking. This is all about roasting. The main actor that we have chosen here to play our main part is a pork loin. The supporting cast are going to be the spices that are going to be enhancing the flavor of the pork and also what we're gonna serve as vegetable. I chose some butternut squash, some Wisconsin apples. Everything is about locality when you wanna eat pure. So we need to pay attention really to the technique of what we're going to do together. Because once I'm done with you, you're going to be recipe creators, not recipe followers. Roasting is when we take the dry temperature of an oven and we turn the water content of an ingredient that is placed within the cavity of the oven into a steam. And through the help of the steam, we cook the ingredient. Why are we doing that is because we want to use that steam for the heat transfer. That's cooking. That's all cooking is all about. When we take heat and infuse an ingredient and transfer it to a cooked experience, and that's what we're going to do. Maple was chosen because we are known for it. Wisconsin is known for its maple syrup. So let's use it in its purest form and let everybody else wish they lived here with us in Wisconsin. Apple another accent that we're going to add to our dish. We are known for our apples. So when we come back, we're going to trap the moisture of the pork loin and we're going to create the first steps to an amazing journey to Flavortown. Come back with me and let's go to Flavortown together. I'll see you in a few. As you plan your new kitchen, to get hands-on with Sub-Zero, the food preservation specialist, and Wolf, the cooking specialist, simply get in touch with this appliance specialist. This is your chef, Michael Fecker. We at Il Mito are all about serving you. If friends, fun, and flavors are what you're craving, then join me at Il Mito. Your table is set, and remember, I live to cook and cook to live. Hi, my name is Riley Berg, and my parents own JFK Design Build. With over 40 years of experience in custom home building and custom remodeling, JFK Design Build has crafted a perfectly unified process to design and build the home of your dreams. We are excited to announce our partnership with Chef Fecker. JFK Design Build and Chef Fecker are now designing and crafting the kitchen of your dreams. Look for the perfect blend. Welcome back everybody. I told you when you get back, we're gonna sear the pork. We are making a Wisconsin maple glazed pork loin. So first thing, let's talk about the main actor. The pork loin has gotta get seared and what that means that you close the exterior's uh, pores and you trap the juices. And there's a trick to that and you're gonna share that. I'm gonna share that with you. Here you go, a little bit of pure sea salt, a little bit of white pepper so it dissolves instantly because the exterior black skin has been removed. And I really don't know that pan, what temperature it's at. I know it's been on, so I'm going to protect myself. I'm gonna drizzle a little bit of extra virgin olive oil over the pork loin. And then, with the back of a tiny little spoon, I'm just gonna spread this around. There's enough fat, which we call it a fat cap, on the pork loin, but we need a little bit of oil to work as a conduit so it brings that heat and renders the fat from the pork loin. Come with me here to the pan. We're gonna take the pork up and we're gonna turn it around into the pan. 
We're gonna season the other side with a little bit of salt and white pepper. Now we have both sides seasoned. And we're gonna turn it around and look at that beauty right there. Look at what just happened. This is called the Maillard reaction. Maillard reaction is when we take protein fibers and fat and turn them into sugar. It happens in many different things. We do it all over, the, even in beer making, we toast hops, that's what happens. So now that this is done, this is gonna go into a 375 degree oven and it's gonna slowly roast. Meanwhile, we have many other things to do together. So let me put this in the oven for you and we get going. Beautiful. Come with me, let's talk about the supporting cast here. Butternut squash, a marriage made in heaven with pork. Wisconsin apple, another marriage made in heaven. And it's from Wisconsin. It is the locality of the ingredients that matter. Sage, beautiful earthy sage. I love working with sage. I work with sage as much as I can. But there's a key in not using too much, otherwise it's gonna become medicine-y. Fennel fonts. I had some fresh fennel I used the other day. I have the herbs that are called the fonts, F-O-N-D, and it's gonna be used as an herb. Cipollini onions, little onions. They are beautiful. They're patty pan onions as well, they're called, and look at the size of them. They're gonna be beautiful caramelized together in that same pan. You know why we're doing all of these firm and high contents of starch ingredients? Because they're gonna roast in the same pan with the pork. So let's get ready here and get going. One of the mistakes that we make with butternut squash is always we try to peel it before. Don't, tip of the knife goes in and we bring the knife to us, we turn it around and you do the same thing on the other side. Now you have the butternut squash which you need to take out seeds of. Hold the spoon, turn the butternut squash. And as you see, the seeds are gonna come out. We're gonna take out. We're gonna take the stem off and we're gonna cut in big, thick ribbons. Then we're gonna turn around and we're gonna cut them in half. Take the end off. Look at this. You ready? Look at this. Very easy. What we're gonna do is now peel it. Because you have less surface to peel, you're not gonna cut yourself. There is one. Now, let's talk about the apple. We did the butternut squash, let's talk about the apple. The apple is the Wisconsin apple. I rather you use a firm textured apple such as a Macintosh or a Granny Smith. It's gonna give you a sour note and it's gonna have enough body to fight that heat and maintain texture. Apple core, what do we do? We take the core out, but a lot of times the core is, nature did not make the core exactly straight for you to be able to cut it the way you want it and easy. So what are we gonna do is, look at the way this apple rolls, right? So we're gonna take a small little slice off and now the apple doesn't roll anymore. It's nice and solid. Then we're gonna cut nice slices. Look at the core, now you can see the core. By the way, look how beautiful that is. We're gonna take the core, place it right in the middle, now you see exactly where the core is. Place, push in, and turn. Turn, turn, pull out. Then with your finger, you push it right out. Press, turn, 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 pull out. There is our apple. That is done. We're gonna place it right here. Quickly talk to you about the pork. The pork has to re reach an internal temperature of 90 degrees. And when we do that, then we pull it out, we create the glaze, and we go back in the oven to finish the cooking process until it reaches 150 internal temperature. Something about roasting that you all need to remember. There is something that we call carry over temperature. So if your recipe says internal temperature of 150, you pull it out at 145 and you allow it to go all the way to 150. Meanwhile, let me get my herbs ready as well. We have some 
of that fennel fonts that we talked about. Notice today for the first time, you see me cooking, I'm using a very small knife. This is a very rustic dish and the ingredients that I'm using don't need a lot of chopping. And these fennel fonts are gonna be beautiful in this glaze. Let's do the sage in that same cutting board. We're gonna hold the stem, we're gonna pull the leaves, we're gonna hold the stem and whatever you have these long stems, cut them off and place them next to each other. Cut in half, place the other half on top of this, few of the stems and pull the knife towards yourself. There is our beautiful sage. The next main actor here is your Cipollini onions. The Cipollini onions gotta be cut in half or you can leave them whole. I prefer them in half, you know why? As the leaves of the onion that are all layered on top of each other loosen up due to the heat, they release themselves and they fall out. And as they fall out, they caramelize more. Remember the difference between a cook and a chef, and I always repeat these details with you. The difference between a cook and a chef is, I as a chef wanna create an experience for you. Someone as a cook has only the intention of feeding you. You do not wanna be fed, you wanna experience food. So we're gonna cut these in half. And basically this is what you're gonna have after you cut them in half. Now that we have the whole painting started, when we come back, we're going to pull the pork loin out of the oven because it has already reached the internal temperature of 90 degrees. We're gonna create the glaze and we're gonna place the pork back in the oven and cook everything else within that same pan. It is gonna be amazing, I promise you. I see you when you come back. I was always, always looking for a name that matches flavor. And that's exactly what zest means, flavor. Why Heartland for Zesty? What better, better place than Heartland? It starts with the word heart. Maybe the spelling is different, but the meaning is the same. You're gonna experience flavor in a very casual yet fine cuisine atmosphere. So I can't wait to cook for all of you. Catering is so much more than feeding a group of guests. To me, to cater your event means to pamper your every need and wants and go beyond your expectations. I cannot wait to create an amazing and memorable event for you and all within your budget. See for yourself what people are saying. Welcome back everybody. The pork loin is ready. Let's go pay the visit, shall we? Come with me, come. Look at this beauty. Look at this beauty. Look at all these natural juices right there. Look at the caramelization on the surface. So, bring it right here to the burner. Turn on your burner to medium and remove this magical protein an ingredient that you have created and place it on a plate right here. Why? Because we're gonna use all those yum yums that have been created within this pan and we're gonna to toast our spices. What are the spices that we're gonna use? In this case, I have chosen six of them. Come with me. Chili powder. What is chili powder? In this culture, we love chili and what it is is basically dry chili ground up as a, in a powder form oregano, garlic powder, and some cumin. 
I have some cumin right here as well because I wanted more accent of the cumin. So reduce temperature and here I have some paprika, here I have a little bit of cinnamon. Cinnamon goes a long way, but it's a great marriage here. Some more cumin as I mentioned and beautiful cloves. Cloves also is very pungent and strong, so go very easy on it. All we're gonna do is take all these spices and go into the pan. Tap, there we go. Oh my God, what just happened? A burst of aroma. And we're gonna toast this. This is something that sets you apart than anyone else. When you toast your spices, you bring out the natural oils of the spice. For those of you that have one of these babies, use them. This is just amazing what just happened. And look at, the, look at this, a paste has been created from your spices. And you're toasting the spices as you're gonna go. Uh, and in the process, we have used the juices that were the yum yums in the base of this pan and the natural flavors from the pork. So it's all gonna be one marriage. Why are we doing this? Because we're gonna now do something else. We're gonna turn it down to very low and we're gonna get some of our Wisconsin maple syrup and we're gonna add it to this pan. Scrape on both sides, push it out. Now, this is a step that you gotta be right here and you can't go anywhere. You know why? Because you do not wanna cook and heat the maple syrup too much. Just whisk with your spatula and your hand, you don't need to use a whisk, and it's gonna become this amazing paste and glaze. This is what a glaze is. A glaze is when you use an ingredient with sugar content, sometimes savory, but you reduce it to a, in a way that it can glaze another ingredient and be that luscious, shiny texture on the surface. Now look what we're doing, you ready? Look at this. The pork is gonna go into the glaze, and we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna turn it, and we're gonna turn it. Now, the entire surface of the pork is glazed. Let it sit here and let it warm up because we have something else to do. We gotta create a platform for the pork to sit on while it's returning into the oven. Why? It's getting kinda cold. It's gotta warm up. That's what we're gonna do. Come with me. We're gonna take the apples that we created and place them in the bottom of the baking sheet. There's your apple. Then we're gonna place the butternut squash all over here. Okay? Next, do you remember when we did the cipollini onions? We're gonna do the cipollini onions in between. Why? As they release their juices, the other two players, cipollini onion is gonna absorb the flavor and vice versa. This is gonna be absolutely amazing. You're gonna love this. It's gonna be so simple, yet so sophisticated. Now the pork that has glazed a little bit is gonna do this next. One more time, we're gonna glaze, we're gonna take the pork and we're gonna sit it on these beautiful veggies as a platform. We're gonna take the glaze and we're gonna pour it over it. Keep a little bit of the glaze, I'm gonna show you why later. We seasoned everything, but we did not season our vegetables. Here goes the salt, and there is enough spice in there. Why? Because of the chili powder that we added to our paste. So, now we're gonna take this roasting dish, and you're gonna come with me into the oven. We want the internal temperature of this pork at 150. So when we come back, we're gonna check the internal temperature of this pork. We're gonna make sure our vegetables are cooked and I'm gonna show you how to take the temperature and how to cut and make the protein rest. When we come back, you're gonna be amazed. I promise you that. As you plan your new kitchen, to get hands-on with Sub-Zero, the food preservation specialist, and Wolf, the cooking specialist, simply get in touch with this appliance specialist. This is your 
chef Michael Fecker. We at Il Mito are all about serving you. If friends, fun, and flavors are what you're craving, then join me at Il Mito. Your table is set, and remember, I live to cook and cook to live. My name is Riley Berg, and my parents own JFK Design Build. With over 40 years of experience in custom home building and custom remodeling, JFK Design Build has crafted a perfectly unified process to design and build the home of your dreams. We are excited to announce our partnership with Chef Thecker. JFK Design Build and Chef Thecker are now designing and crafting the kitchen of your dreams. Look for the perfect blend. It's time. Come on with me. Come on with me. Look here. We have this magnificent pork roast and we want to take the internal temperature and see what temperature is, is it at. Always we make a mistake by poking the meat as such on the surface. You go to the side and you push it all the way in. This thermometer is going to go up. We are at 135. We are at 140. What are we going to do now? We're going to pull this meat and we're going to allow it to rest. You know why? Because in the resting process, it's going to reach the temperature that we are looking for. What magnificent roast. Bring it over. Many of you are going to say, Chef, you left the thermometer in there. That is correct. The reason is because if I take that thermometer out right now, all the juices are gonna go run. Why? Because the protein fibers are being pressed. We gotta let the meat relax, any protein. So we're gonna leave the thermometer in there and you're gonna see what's gonna happen. We're gonna tent this. This process is called tenting. Piece of aluminum, we're gonna close it. Why are we closing all the sides here? We don't want the steam to scape because if the steam scapes, doesn't help us in the carryover temperature. What is carryover temperature? Internal temperature at 140 when we pull it out of the oven. Chef, 140 for me is a little bit too raw to pork. Don't worry. By the time we are done with the resting time, your pork has already carried over to 150. That's what carryover temperature is all about. Now. Come with me here and see these beauties right here. We have the apple, we have the butternut squash, and we have the cipollini onion sitting in that glaze. Do you remember when I told you leave some of the glaze in the pan? This is for the following reason. We're gonna turn on the pan to medium high. We're gonna bring our garlic, our fennel, and our sage that we cut right here. And with the help of our tongue, we're going to push the garlic into the pan, the fennel into the pan, and the sage into the pan. Now, if we would have, chef, I could have added all of these things into the roasting pan before. No, you couldn't, because all of them would dehydrate and burn on you. And not only burn, when the water is evaporated, the flavor is going to evaporate with it. Next, something that you all need to remember. Food is all about balance. Why does a great chef leaves an impression on you and one doesn't? They technically may be the same, but one understands balance of food. Citric acid or citrus is crucial in creating that balance. We have sweetness here. We're going to give it some nice tart acidity. This is a lime squeezer. You put the cut side down and you press. We turn the pan off now. We don't need any more heat. Why? Because 
We do not want this beautiful glaze of maple syrup to burn and to dry out. So, we have that apple, we have that cipollini onion, we have those beautiful butternut squash, we mix them around. I wish all of you were with me, seriously. And we're gonna scrape that in this pan. Oh, oh my God, I wish all of you were with me, I swear. It is amazing. You gotta make this at home. Look, it is so simple, you saw everything in a pan. Now, come with me and quickly see what happened. We have reached the internal temperature that is desired and we're gonna take this thermometer out. Now, we're gonna take the pork loin and look at those juices. Look at all of those juices right there, look at that. That is gold right there, that's gonna go in our sauce. Oh yeah, that glaze. Come here with me now and we're gonna see how to slice this. So, we're gonna pull the sleeve off. Look at this, ready? Chef is going to work, follow me. Look at that baby, look at that beauty right there. Look, it's so moist that it doesn't stand up, it just slides off. As many slices as you wish, you see that juice right there? Look at that juice, look at that juice. Don't be fooled by many porks that you see and they're juicy. There are two kinds of pork. There's enhanced pork that has saline solution injected in it and you have natural pork. This is a natural pork. So if it's juicy, it's because of the technique that you and I used. Now, we're gonna put these together, go with the knife below it and bring it right here in the center of our platter. I made this with every one of you. So you are really the chefs. I am only working as your sous chef. That's all it is. The recipe is on chefficker.com. This direction, I hope to God that you use it until you're perfect at it, and I'm always here for you. So keep loving life, manifest it through food, and I'm right here to cook with you and keep on cooking. I love you, and I see you next week.